Hello, learners and leaders. I'm so excited you're here and so happy for today's activity. We are still talking about Animalia by Graham Bass. Last week, we talked all about the different kinds of animals in Animalia and we broke them down into classes. We learned how to do that. We're still gonna talk about animals this week, but we're going on a hunt. We're gonna hunt for tracks. All right, you wanna come find some cool tracks with us? Let's go. We're talking about animals today, specifically about animal tracks. Did you know that different kinds of animals leave different tracks? In fact, by looking at the print left in the mud by an animal, we can usually tell what kind of animal it was. For example, if you see a print that has four toes on the front and back feet, you're probably looking at a cat or a dog track. And if you see claws or tiny triangular marks at the ends of those toes, you're looking at a dog's track. I know that because cat claws retract. Retract is a fancy word that means pull up or inside. Uh, cat's claws retract up into their fur on their paws when they walk. So if you see a, a track with the claw marks on it, that means you're looking at a dog type animal, like a coyote, a fox, maybe even a wolf, or just a regular domestic dog. See, look at all the cool things you can tell just by looking at a track. Before we go on our adventure, we're gonna need to gather our supplies. The first thing that we're gonna need is some strips of paperboard. I use the paperboard from a cereal box, obviously this is Lucky Charms, um, because it's pretty firm but still flexible. I should be able to uh, move it into a kind of a little fence shape pretty easily. We'll also need a stapler to staple those pieces of paperboard together. You can also use a paper clip, but honestly I find the stapler a little more solid. We'll need some perfect cast or plaster of Paris. You can also use dental stone. I had trouble finding plaster of Paris, but this perfect cast was easily available at my local craft store. We'll need some water. We're gonna mix the water up with the cast medium to make the kind of goo that we're gonna pour into the track. We'll need a measuring cup because you have to measure the correct ratio. Make sure you have the right amount of plaster and the right amount of water. And then we'll need a mixing bowl and a mixing utensil. All right, gather up your supplies and let's go. Learners and leaders, we are in the field and we're ready to go find some tracks. I'm in a natural area by my house. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but there's a river right by me. We're gonna go look by the riverbank because our best chance for finding tracks is gonna be in a muddy riverbank or in the dirt after it's rained where there's some mud. We're probably not gonna find tracks in a place where there are leaves or grass. Think about when you make tracks. We make tracks of our footprints in the mud, but we definitely don't make tracks and like, leave footprints when we walk across the lawn, right? Same thing for animals. There needs to be something to kind of pull them down. So we're gonna look and see what we can find. We're really lucky because in this area, there are often elk, deer, coyote, fox. Sometimes there are even bear in this area. So hopefully we get lucky and find a great track to cast today. All right, learners and leaders. So we did some searching, we looked all around and we found a great track. It's right here and it's about the size of my hand. It has two prints, two toes. So that right away tells us it's probably an elk or a deer. Because it's about the size of my hand, it's probably an elk. Also, we can note that there are one, two, three, four tracks in the mud right here. There's also a ton of elk poop around. So pretty good idea that it's an elk. Now that we've found our track, let's go ahead and cast it so we can take it home. All right, before we start our cast, we're gonna go ahead and clear out the track. We wanna make a cast of the actual track, none of the sticks and rocks that are around. So we don't wanna pull out anything that's actually in the cast. So like if you had, or in the track rather, if you had like a stick or something that was in here that was 
See like this stick is in there pretty good. I'm not gonna pull that out because we'll ruin the track. But we are gonna pull out some stuff around it, kind of get rid of any sticks or whatever that are around here. Because we're gonna put a little fence around it and we want the actual cast, not the sticks and rocks. All right, looks like we're pretty clean. Let's go ahead and get started casting. Before we can actually start pouring the plaster, we need to make a little fence around our around our track so that we have a boundary for our plaster. So I have my cereal cardboard. I like the cereal cardboard because it's nice and flexy. Lucky Charms, aren't my kids lucky? They got some delicious cereal. I'm just gonna put two strips together, staple them, check and see. Nope, not big enough gonna put another one in there staple it together let's do a test oh I think that's gonna be perfect we're gonna make it a, yep just about that big so we're gonna staple it in a couple places here we're gonna staple you could also use paper clips I like the staples because they're a little bit more solid and we're going to kind of mush that into the ground, being careful not to ruin the integrity of the track. Alright, so we have our little fence made. Now we are going to actually mix up our uh, casting mixture. I have this perfect cast. I got it at Hobby Lobby. I'll include a link in the description. And grown-ups, just a reminder, I will do a blog post with step-by-step -step instructions here. But here's our um, casting mixture. I have water that we're going to mix in as well. I have a bucket to mix it with and our measuring tool and measuring spoon or mixing spoon rather. So the instructions on the back of the box say one part water to three parts plaster. And let's get that open. I will take this home with me. I'm not going to leave it out in nature. That would be, that would be bad form. All right, let's get to scooping. And I have no idea how much plaster this is gonna take. Let's measure. All right, we're gonna measure out two cups of plaster. See, there's my mark right there. Two cups of plaster into my bowl. Then we're gonna measure two thirds of a cup of water because our ratio is three parts plaster to one part water. So we're gonna do two thirds here. Two thirds of a cup of water. We're gonna mix that in. And it should be about the thickness of pancake batter. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Get it good and mixed and this definitely is it looks actually exactly like pancake batter. Our mix. Okay, that feels pretty good and mixed. Make sure I'm getting all the chunks on the outside edge. All right, tap my spoon off there. Now I'm going to tap this gently on the ground to get rid of any air bubbles. Now we're going to pour our plaster. We are not gonna pour our plaster straight into the track because it might disrupt the track. I'm actually gonna mush this down just a little bit more. What we're gonna do instead is pour on the edge around the track and it'll fill into the track. See how it's doing that? And my fence, the integrity of my fence is, is collapsing. I'm gonna mush that in a little bit more. All right. There we go, we have started our plaster cast. Okay, so we're done casting, and now we have to do the really hard part. We have to wait. It takes 45 minutes to an hour for this cast to cure to where we can move it. Don't move it until you feel like it's hard, and I'll have some tips in my blog post for how you know when that is. So don't move it until you feel like it's hard or else you could break your cast. Um, Check things out around you. Look and see what's going on. Maybe your grown-up brought lunch for you. This would be a good time to enjoy that. Go out and do something fun for 45 minutes to an hour because nature is awesome. 
All right, we waited our time and now we are gonna check and see if this is dry. Good way to check is you can look and see it's gonna go from that glossy wet look to a more matte dry look. When you see that, you can touch it really gently. Feels pretty hard and you can kind of tap it. Definitely dry and ready to go. Now we're gonna get this from underneath. We're gonna try, we're not gonna try and pull it up from the edges. We're gonna kind of scoop down underneath it and flip it over and hope that this worked. Okay, so this is what we have learners and leaders. We can kind of see there's one toe, there's the other toe. Now, this has to dry for a few days. Even though it feels dry now, it needs to be really, really dry before we can get it totally clean and look and see what we've got. To get it home, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna wrap it in newspaper or paper towels, or I have some napkins. We're not gonna wrap it in a plastic bag because the plastic bag doesn't let it breathe. We're gonna put it on top of a paper towel and then we're gonna slide a napkin under it. We're gonna kind of wrap it up and then we'll get it home. All right, see you back in the studio, learners and leaders. We're back in the studio, learners and leaders. We've waited a few days, or you could even wait a week, and we're gonna clean the cast off. I've actually already cleaned mine off, and you can see that it's not pristine white because that dirt got mixed in with the plaster, and that's okay, because it's not gonna drop dirt and bits all over the house. What we're gonna do is use a soft, old toothbrush, don't use a toothbrush that someone's using, and a little bit of water, you're gonna gently brush the dirt off your cast. I have this brush which is designed for cleaning your nails, and I just kinda ran it along like this. What you don't wanna do is drop your cast into the sink like it's a piece of dishes. That's gonna make your cast dissolve. Dissolve is a fancy word that means to break apart into teeny, teeny, tiny pieces and mix the, with the water. The pieces of the cast would be so small that you wouldn't even know they were there. It would look like it was just water and your cast would have disappeared. What you can do is hold the cast under running water and use your brush to just gently scrub off the loose dirt. Once you get it pretty clean, we're gonna look at it, figure out what kind of animal we have, and we can label it and do some fun stuff with it. In order to figure out what kind of a track that we just cast, we're gonna look at pictures on the web. I'll include some resources linked on in my blog post. Uh, this one, you can see, has two distinct toes and no claws. I think that we have an elk track. And I think that because it's about the size of my hand, and again, it has those two toes um, and no claws. What you're gonna wanna do is keep in mind what kind of animals live in your area. That's gonna give you a clue right there. I know that there are elk in the area that I visited, and I could even see the area that they had bedded down in. Again, I'm gonna put some good sites for research in my blog post. I'll put the link for that in the description, but check those out and see what kind of a track you have. Now that our cast is all clean and we know what kind of an animal it is, what we can do is flip it over on the back, take a permanent marker and label what kind of animal it is, what day we found it, and where we found it at. You could even flip it over and do something so cool like painting it, or you could just leave it beautiful and natural like this. But you're all done and ready to display your track in your house. Learners and leaders, what an adventure. We went out hunting for tracks. We found a good one. We figured out how to cast it with plaster and bring it home. Then we cleaned it up and figured out what kind of animal we had. Wasn't that so cool? While we were learning, we found a couple fancy words. Let's review what they meant. Our first fancy word was retract. Retract just means to pull up or out of the way. Our second fancy word was dissolve. Dissolve means to break down into teeny, teeny, tiny pieces and to spread apart into the liquid. So it looks like all we have is liquid, not a liquid and a solid. 
Thanks for coming along, learners and leaders. I always have so much fun when we go and explore together. If you want to do some more cool animal stuff, have your grown-ups go to my website. I'll put the link in the description and check out the Animalia activities. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you know next time we go on an adventure. And if you had fun, share the video with your friends so they can come along next time too. Thanks so much, learners and leaders. I had a great time. Have a good day.